Hallelujah. Do you have your Bibles with you today? Go ahead and hold them up and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I've got ears to hear and a heart to receive. So teach to me the word of God. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. I needed that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. We are talking about confidence. And actually, this is week four of confidence from a series that we are teaching midweek. But the last time I was supposed to teach this series midweek, the Holy Spirit broke out in church and uh, we never got to the sermon. Glory to God. We had praise. We had worship. We had uh, prayer for one another. And it was magnificent. And so this has just been stirring in my heart. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to preach it Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Someone say praise the Lord. So this is a message entitled confidence to build upon. Confidence to build upon. And our text verse is 1 John 5 verses 14 and 15. And it reads, now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we have desired or asked of him John says this is the confidence that we have in him but this is the confidence that we have the believers life should be filled with confidence in the Lord um, confidence in his word in fact we're told that faith is confidence that what we hope for will actually happen Hebrews 11 chapter chapter 11 verse 1 the New Living Translation faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen so if we are people of faith we should be people of confidence say I have confidence and when you have confidence, there's certain things that you know, that you know, that you know. It says here in our text verse, now this is the confidence that we have in Him. So it's in Him. It's not, we're not talking about pride in ourselves. We're not talking about ego. We're not talking about selfishness. We're talking about what we have in Him. This is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions. Listen, there are certain things that you know. Amen. I wish I had an amen. amen. There are certain things that we know that we know that we know. And we build our lives upon those things that we know that we know that we know. Listen, you will build your life upon the confidences that you have. Amen. Let me say that again. The life that you build will be built upon the confidences that you have. You cannot build a life on doubts. You cannot build your life on uncertainty. You build your life on what you know. That you know that you know. Listen, many, many years ago when I was a young man, I went to a, 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 a karate uh, arena. There, it was an arena and there was a giant uh, karate um, what do they call it? Tournament, karate tournament. And uh, many, many different folks were fighting. But, but at the height of the karate tournament was this, this duel between two uh, multi-degree black belts. And, uh, and a fellow said to me, uh, he was a karate black belt himself, he says, you got to come and see this. This is, this is phenomenal. And I said, okay, I'd, lo I'd love to. And so I got there, and it got to the point where these two martial artists were getting ready to fight. And he says, you see those two guys over there? They're going to be fighting. This is what everybody came to see was these two fighting. And uh, so I looked at one of them, and he was shadow boxing, and he was working up a sweat, and he was kicking this and kicking that and, and going through going through everything that, that you would want to go through. 
and, uh, and he, he was working up a lather getting ready for this fight. And then I looked at the other guy and he's laid out on the gym floor. He's just snoring. He's just he's as relaxed as can be. He's sound asleep. And uh, the black belt that was with me, he says, tell me, what do you see the difference between those two guys? I said, well, this guy, he's a bruiser. I mean, look at him. He's working up a lather and he hasn't even started yet. And uh, I don't know what to make of that guy. He's sound asleep laying on the floor. He says, no, no, Here, here's the difference. That guy who's working up a sweat is trying to convince himself that he can win this match. That guy knows he's going to win this match. Come on, church. Come on, church. When you know that you know that you know that you know, that's when the peace comes. That's when the rest comes. That's when you know that you, are, you have a victory. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone give the Lord a shout of praise. The life that I build will be built upon the confidences that I have. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Matthew 16, verse 13. Jesus asked his disciples, came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, asked his, his disciples saying, Who do men say that I am? Son, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Verse 14. So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Those are all compliments. Uh, you would like to be called John the Baptist. You would like to be called Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Those were all complimentary statements, but every single one of them were wrong. He was not any one of those things. But the anointing came upon Peter. Then Jesus, in verse 15, asked them, Who do you say that I am? And this is the foundation of all faith. This is the foundation. You will not have working faith until you can answer this question correctly. Who do you say? Where's your confidence at? What do you believe? What do you know to be true? Who do you say that I am? Peter said, I know this one. I know this one. Hallelujah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. Woo! Blessed are thou. Blessed are thou. You didn't get it from flesh and blood, but that's a revelation from my Father who is in heaven. Thou art the Christ. This is just like Peter. Peter was full of energy. Peter was a leader of men. Peter was bold. Peter was confident. Hallelujah. Jesus asked all of the disciples, who do men say that I am? Well, they, there's a lot of questions and thoughts about just about who you are. And, and you know what? Other, other religions are very complimentary about who Jesus is. He's a teacher. He's a, he's a prophet. He's a this and that. But there's only one correct answer to that question. And you got to get this one right. Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, I know exactly who you are because God the Father has dropped it into my heart. Thou art the Christ the son of the living God hallelujah someone say hallelujah. hallelujah now the source of his confidence was a word from God because in verse 17 Jesus answered and said unto you said unto him blessed are you Simon bar Jonah for flesh and blood is not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven he had a word that had pierced his heart that he could build his life upon. And Jesus could build upon that particular confident revelation of faith. Watch this. Verse 18. Jesus said, and I also say to you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. Peter said, I know this, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, I can build a church on that. Amen. I can build on that. The confidence 
that God wants to get into your life according to faith, according to the word that God has dropped into your heart should give you victory in every area of your life such that God can build a life. Oh, I wish I had an amen. Listen, if John said you can pray with confidence knowing that if you're praying according to the will of God, God hears that prayer and whatever you pray, God will answer the desires of your heart. That prayer is, is granted. If you can have confidence that your prayers will be answered, can't you have confidence in every other area of your life? I'm telling you, if you can have confidence in your prayer life, you can have confidence in every area of your life. And Peter said, I got a word from God. I know the answer to this question. Thou art the Christ. Jesus said, I can build on that. I can build a church on that. God can build your life on the word that you know, 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 hallelujah. God can build your marriage on a word from God that you know, that you know, that you. God can build a ministry. God can build a family. God can build a business. God can build a church. God can build a nation. God can change the world on a word that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Hallelujah. You're a rock. He said, you're a rock, man. He said, I asked everybody this question. Nobody gave me the answer I was looking for. You gave it to me, Peter. You're a rock. Man, that's a rock of revelation that I can, that I can build on glory to God. And, and not only that, Peter... But I'll give you keys to the kingdom, verse 9. It says, man, I'm going I'm to build a church. I'm going to build the kingdom of God. Amen. And I'm going to give, listen, you give keys to folks that you're confident know how to use those keys. Amen. I don't give the keys to my car to folks who I'm not sure can drive. <laughs> I want to have some level of confidence before I hand over the keys. And Jesus said, man, you got it right. You know something that you know. I'm going to build on that revelation. And I'll give you keys, glory to God, to the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm going to show you how it works. I'll show you things that you can unlock. Show you how to lock some other stuff up. Hallelujah. So I want to take just a moment. And I want to look at Peter. Since we're talking about Peter, we're talking about the confidence of Peter, the confident life we should have as believers. I want to look at the life of Peter. Here's a, a couple of different facets or keys in the life of Peter uh, on how to build a life upon your confidences. Everybody said amen. 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 Here's number one. Confident people are quick to, de to declare and step out on their faith. Confident people are quick. They don't get stuck. They don't get... Peter said, I know the answer. He was, listen, Peter was quick to speak up and say, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter was the one that stepped out of the boat when the rest of the disciples stayed in the boat. Peter was the one who stood up on the day of Pentecost. This is that which you have heard of, of the prophet Joel. Glory to God. In the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all, all flesh. Peter was quick to speak up. Peter was quick to step out. And confidence is quick to declare faith and step out on faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Speak the word, heed the word. Say that real quick. Speak the word. Heed the word. You won't do it if you're not confident. If you don't know that you know that you know. But when you know something, you're ready to speak it. I am the healed of the Lord. My God is for me. He loves me. He's with me. He's filled me with His Spirit. Hallelujah. Number two. Confident people are not easily distracted. They keep their focus. 
Number one, confident people are quick to declare and step out on their faith. Number two, confident people are not easily distracted. They keep their focus. When Jesus was walking on the water in Matthew 14, Peter said, if, you're the, if that's you, Lord, you, you beckon me to come. Bid me to come. And Jesus simply said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat onto the water. Really, he stepped onto that word, the word of God. You walk on the word, glory to God. He walked on the solid foundation of the word of God. He was confident. He, he had a revelation. I can do this. I can do this. But, but you got to make sure that you're not easily distracted. Confident people are not easily distracted. They keep their focus. There's a reason why you stepped out. Keep your eyes on that. Because there's always wind. There's always waves. There's always the blustering moving of the ocean. There's always that threatening thing that wants to cause fear in your life. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He started to sink. Took his eyes off of Jesus. He started to sink. Listen. When you are confident about your anointing and your calling and your gifting in God, you keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep your eyes on the calling of God. You keep your eyes on what God got, what got you out of the boat and onto the water. You keep your eyes. There's always going to be wind. There's always going to be waves. But let me tell you, there will always be Jesus on that water to keep you walking on the word hallelujah Jesus did not run and hide Jesus did not play a trick on Peter Peter got out of the boat and started walking to Jesus and Jesus did not run away he was always there and let me tell you he is always there for you I said he's always there for you if you can get out of that boat and walk towards Jesus he won't disappoint you Hallelujah. Number three, confident people are sometimes overconfident. <laughs> this is not a good thing. <laughs> I said confident people are sometimes overconfident. You've got to stick to your revelation until God gives you another revelation. Peter was confident in the person of Christ. He just didn't have a revelation about the mission of Christ. And this is where he got out of confidence and into presumption. He got out of faith and into presumption. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Now, right after Peter declared, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus began to unfold his mission. And from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples, Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. He must suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised the third day. In verse 22, then Peter took him aside. <laughs> Peter took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus. That was a bad ministry decision. He got the first question right. He's about to fail the test. There's more than one question on the test. Verse 22, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. In other words, you're not going to go to the cross. You're not going to be put to death. You're going to be enthroned. You're going to be the leader, the king of Israel. Verse 23, but Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Hey, Peter just got the high praises of Jesus because he had a revelation that Jesus said came from God. At two verses earlier, he was mindful of God. God was speaking to him. Peter, you are blessed. You didn't get that revelation from men. You got that revelation from my Father. And confidence got overconfident. And faith got into presumption. And old confident, bold, eager Peter said, Listen now, I know who you are, so I know what you should be doing. And Jesus says, You know, you're not mindful of God anymore. 
You're, you're just after your own desires. You're mindful of men. Get behind me. You think you can rebuke me? Get behind me. You're an offense to me. Get behind me, Satan. You, we have to be so careful that when we're confident of one thing, we, we're moving in our next confidence on the revelation of God. Oh, there's, I know it. There's no reason for an amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The good news is Peter would eventually get it. I said Peter would eventually get it. Yeah, there would be a time when he would deny and lie and run away, but eventually he would get it. And if you turn to 1 Peter 1 and, and verse 1, Peter says, An apostle of Jesus Christ to the pilgrims, so forth and so forth. Verse 2. To the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Peter says, no, you don't have to go and, and be crucified. But once Jesus was dead, buried, and resurrected, that's all Peter could talk about was the blood of Jesus Christ. He's giving thanks for the blood. Let's keep reading verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again. We're born again unto a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Listen, Peter told Jesus, you don't have to go to the cross. We don't want to see anybody crucify you. But once Jesus was resurrected, that's all Peter could talk about. I thank God, Peter says, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. I thank God that his blood has cleansed us. I thank God that we can be born again. I thank God that he is the resurrected son of God. Hallelujah. Verse 4, resurrected from the dead unto an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Hallelujah. Peter got it. Say, Peter got it. I said, Peter got it. He didn't get it originally, but he sure got it afterwards. Hallelujah. So number three, confident people. Sometimes get overconfident. We have to be careful about that. Number four, confident people understand the power of words. They reject the wrong words. They embrace the right words. Again in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore lay aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, all evil speaking. Verse 2, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. It's the word of God that causes growth in your spirit life. Amen. Verse 3, indeed, if you've tasted the Lord, yet that is gracious. Tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. There are words that are to be laid aside because they don't do you any good. There are words that are to be ingested like the, the milk is given to the newborn babes so that they may grow. Don't you want to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? Number five, confident people look for patterns of success. Jesus laid a pattern of success for us. And Peter saw that pattern and said, listen, you, you do this. Watch this. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Coming to him as a living stone. Who's the living stone? Jesus Christ. Coming to him as the living stone. A, a re, a rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God. And precious. Verse 5. You also as living stones. Now, he is the cornerstone. He is the living stone. But we follow that pattern. So we then become living stones, are built up to a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. There is a pattern of success that is laid out before us. And in faith and in the confidence that we have in the Lord, we Follow that pattern of success in order to build the life, to build the marriage, to build the ministry that God has designed for us. And finally, number six, confident people continually work on themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. 
This is why it's not, confidence is not an issue of ego. Confidence is not an issue of pride. Confidence is an issue upon which we work on ourselves continually. 2 Peter 1, verse 5. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with all patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness. Verse 7. And godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for one another. Verse 8. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The life I build will be built upon the confidences I have. The life I build will be built upon the faith that I have. The faith that I have will be built upon the word of God that I have. But it will only be built upon that word if I'm confident in it, if I know that I know that I know. Confident people, number one, are quick to declare and step out on the word of faith. Confident people, number two, are not easily distracted, but they keep their focus on what they stepped out of the boat in pursuit of, the Lord Jesus. Number three, confident people are not over or should not be overconfident. Stick to the revelation that you have until God gives you the next revelation. Confident people reject the wrong words, embrace the right words. They understand the power of words. Confident people follow the proper pattern of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the pattern of success. And number six, confident people are always at work on themselves. And the church said amen. amen. The church said amen. amen. Did you get anything out of this today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.